Kristen. Kristen Ralstad has been a member for a long time, but what makes this different is that uh, she's now playing uh, on a Sunday morning, a regular service, and uh, so happy uh, that, that she agreed to do that. I had to beg and plead and scold and <laughs> lie, cheat, and steal, <laughs> um, but we got her. Um, um, we are so blessed with four musicians who are in the regular rotation now. Each of the four is a member. They're not coming in from outside just to play. When they're not playing, they're here in worship, uh, which is really quite extraordinary. Uh, we are, are blessed. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Psalm 119, the Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think of my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your word. Though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to praise you because of your righteousness. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Epistles from Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And, we know, and he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. 
The Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, behold, things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text is from Psalm 119, verse 57. The Lord is my portion. Do you have a plan on leaving an inheritance to someone? Maybe your children, your grandchildren? Most people use their will as one last opportunity to bless those they love. Some people use their will as one last opportunity to seek revenge stick it to someone. 
Already before she died, American businesswoman Leona Helmsley had earned the reputation as the queen of mean. When she died in 2007, her children and grandchildren learned she had bequeathed her $12 million estate to her little white Maltese dog. She had cut her family off from the inheritance. That was one well-pampered pooch. <laughs> I wonder if the tribe of Levi initially felt cut off. The land promised to God's people had finally been uh, conquered and the 12 tribes of Judah were moving in, but it wasn't going to be a mad chaotic dash, every man for himself sort of thing. No, each of the tribes of Judah was assigned a portion of the land. A larger tribe received a larger inheritance, a smaller tribe received a smaller portion. To the tribe of Reuben was given the valley of Arnon, to the tribe of Gad was given the territory and cities of Gilead, and so on. But for the tribe of Levi, to the Lord, to the Lord said to them, you shall have no inheritance in the land. Neither shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the people of Israel. The Levites were going to be the priestly class tending to the religious duties of the Israelites. Therefore, they were not given land, but God himself as their portion. Similarly, the text says today, the Lord is your portion, your inheritance. Today, the odds of receiving a large monetary inheritance are becoming less likely. People are living longer. Costs of assisted living facilities have skyrocketed. Parents have been spending more on themselves and on their children with... Um, college debt and, and uh, long-term rent issues. The middle class especially is not no longer able to transfer wealth as it once did. As a result, after the funerals, many children are surprised to learn that they will not receive a nice big check from the family estate. Some had even been out there kicking tires, racking up debt in anticipation. In a world of unknowns and a world well familiar with disappointment, our psalm teaches us to say, the Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. This inheritance is infinitely better than anything our parents can bequeath us. We don't need the curio cabinet stuffed with Hummel figurines, right? And no amount of money can save us from sin, death, or the devil. Don't set your heart on anything your parents might be able to bequeath you. Ecclesiastes 5 says, if you love money, you'll never have enough. It also says, great wealth brings greater anxiety. True security, true wealth, true peace comes only with the Lord, not in, in abundance. What a gift, then, that God allows, invites us to claim him as our portion, our inheritance, our life's lot. Psalm 73, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Notice this is no temporary earthly inheritance. He says God is my portion forever. Similarly, Psalm 142 says, You, Lord, are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Not some piece of desert wasteland in the Mideast that hardly supports life. No. Our inheritance is with the Lord in the land of the living. Our text says, The Lord is our portion. Deuteronomy 32 flips that and says, But the Lord's portion is his people. He gets us as his inheritance. Seems like he drew the short straw on that one. And yet the Lord is actually happy with that. He wants us. He covets us, treasures us. Nothing but grace can explain it. 
Remember how Moses felt about the people? Remember how he complained to God? Numbers 11. Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant? If this is how you're going to treat me, just put me to death right now. Moses was done. He had had enough of God's people, but not the Lord. By grace, the Lord's portion is his people. Exodus 19, you shall be a treasured, my treasured possession among all peoples. You shall be to me a holy nation. As Gentiles, we were on the outside, not God's people. We could make no claim on him or his inheritance. But through the death of his son and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has now included us by faith. In holy baptism, God has laid claim on us as his children and adopted us. Paul writes, now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. God's children now. Not just in name only. Our full status as God's children makes us beneficiaries of everything Christ possesses. We are co-heirs with Christ. 1 Peter 2, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. He wants us. He covets us. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. God's people, ancient people, could not claim the promised land by their own conquest. No, it was given them by the Lord. The Lord did the fighting for them. The Lord did the fighting for you in Christ and Him crucified. Luther writes, is not this a beautiful, glorious exchange? by which Christ, who is entirely innocent and holy, not only takes upon himself my sin and guilt, but also clothes me and adorns me with, who am nothing but sin, but with his own innocence and purity, then dies the shameful death of the cross for the sake of my sins, through which I have deserved death and condemnation, and grants to me his righteousness, in order that I may live with him eternally in glorious and unspeakable joy. Through this blessed exchange, he calls it, in which Christ changes places with us, we are freed from sin and death and given his righteousness and life as our own. It's all gift. Colossians 1 says, The Lord has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. One last thing. If your parents don't want to tell you what's in the will, they don't have to. Children really have no legal recourse to force them to reveal the contents of the will. However, the Lord wants you to know. He wants you to have that comfort, that assurance throughout life, that he is our inheritance, our portion, and that we are his inheritance, his portion. He promises never to cut us off from the inheritance. And he urges us not to cut ourselves off from him. Throughout life, all his ups and downs, struggles and suffering, throughout life, the Lord wants you to be able to say with the psalmist, the Lord is my portion. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. In our prayers, we pray for the sick for Marge Gecki, Wendy Wilson, Agnes Thurl, John Block, Jim Strage, for Victoria, daughter of Fiona Maxwell, for Tim Zastro, brother of Phil and Paul, for Patricia Fox, for Jim Neitzel. Please stand for prayer.
O oh Lord our God, we acknowledge your great goodness toward us and praise you for the mercy and grace that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have known. We sincerely repent of the sins this day and those in the past. Pardon our offenses. Correct and reform what is lacking in us. And help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Inscribe your law upon our hearts and equip us to serve you with holy and blameless lives. May each day remind us of the coming of the night when no one can work. In the emptiness of this present age, keep us united by a living faith through the power of your Holy Spirit with him who is the resurrection and the life, that we may escape the bitter pains of eternal condemnation. By your Holy Spirit, bless the preaching of your word and the administration of your sacraments in this place. Preserve these gifts to us and to all Christians. Guard and protect us from all dangers to body and soul. Be with those we've named, we pray, and grant them healing and peace according to your will. Grant that we may with faithful perseverance receive from you our sorrows as well as our joys, knowing that health and sickness, riches and poverty and all things come by, your, by permission of your fatherly hand. Keep us this day under your protective care and preserve us securely trusting in your everlasting goodness and love. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
We thank you that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Jesus.